the seventh difference between someone has to be the and someone does not have to be the Lord. Someone who trusts Hashem will not grieve, will not be sad when something that he wants is withheld from him. And nor when he loses something that's beloved to him. He's not going to go and, uh, and um, take it the wrong way. Let's say a person loses a cherished possession. He lost the... Uh, you know, his, his favorite watch, or he lost uh, something in the work, or he lost a contract, or he lost a good friend, whatever it is, he's not going to take it the wrong way and get upset with with, with the situation. He's going to take it to the Tova. He'll not hoard which is, what is currently available, right? A person, he doesn't have to be the haunt that an item will exist soon. He said he has to hoard it up. He has to say, I have to buy so much now. Who knows what's going to be tomorrow? And he doesn't worry, worry about anything besides for today. We said before that the Ariza and the, the Rashash, the Val Shem Tov, they used to take the money that they needed for today. And today only, any money they had extra, they would give away. And they would wait for the next day for their Parnassah. And they would never save money from the day before for the next day. Because they believed that the Kaddish Baruch Hu would give them, just like he gave the people in the man. Every day he gave them what they needed. So therefore... Um, he does not concern with what's going to be tomorrow. He doesn't know when his end will come. He doesn't know when he will pass away. He relies on Hashem to prolong his days. He, just like he believes tomorrow I'll wake up because Hashem will not bring my end yet. I also believe that Hashem will bring my parnasah tomorrow and give me what I need for tomorrow, tomorrow. He does not rejoice on the future and he does not grieve over it. Don't suffer tomorrow's troubles because you don't even know what one day could bring. Maybe tomorrow you won't be here. And in some it's and you're worried for something that was not for you. So therefore, he says the person has to make sure to be worried about today and today only. So now, it's a very high level in Muna that we know there was a mahluk between Shammai and Hillel. The Gemara says in the that Shammai would honor Shabbat all week long. How would he honor Shabbat? Whenever he came across a nice animal, he would buy it for Shabbat. And if during the day, week he would find another better animal, he would keep, take, switch, the, switch it and say, the one I bought before, I'll keep. And the other one I bought for today, today I'll keep it for Shabbat. And then he would eat his weekday meals. That way it was always something for the honor of Shabbat. He led, used to say, no, Baruch Hashem, Yom Yom, Ya Moslanu. Right? He would say, no, I don't have to worry about during the week for Shabbat. Every day Hashem will provide for us and I'll find something right before Shabbat for the sake of Shabbat. So you see that, uh, that you have to be on a certain level to be able to believe this, that Hashem will provide for me what I, what I need for today will be for today. There was a, there was a person who used to always tell me, I, I said to him, well, by this age I'll be this, by this age I'll buy that, by this age I'll accomplish this, you know. And, and he said to me, why are you planning for years from now and I don't even know what I'm eating tomorrow? Take day by day. Why are you worrying so much about tomorrow? Tomorrow, you know, in America they teach us you have to have your whole life, your whole destiny planned out, and you have to have everything by this time, by this time. We don't know because this Baruch runs our life. All we can do is try our best and take it one day at a time. Because many times when you take your whole year, your whole life at a time, you can get overwhelmed. You you could crumble. So therefore, he says the The person who has bitachon and Hashem, he's only concerned with what he lost in zchuyot and merits. What he lost in a relationship with Hashem. And he's only concerned about making sure he's ready for Olam Abba. He's worried that maybe he's not going to have enough time. Just like Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. Before he passed away, he was crying. And he stood asking, why are you crying? He says, I see two paths in front of me. One to Ganed, one to Gainom. I don't know which one they're taking me. And he said, Rabbi, you're a big rabbi. Are you going to go to Gainom? He says, I'm not scared they're going to ask me if I did. I'm scared they're going to ask me if I didn't do enough. Today, I'm scared they're going to ask me, did you do enough? Did you really do what you could have done? Yes, we know you did mitzvot, but you could have done more. I'm scared about a question that maybe I'm going to get in on because of that. So therefore, he was crying before he passed away. So first, person has to ask himself, all right, don't be worried. Am I worried about physical things? Am I worried about what's going to be tomorrow? I should really be worried about what's going to be tomorrow by my Olam Abba, if I have enough merits. Because if I do, then of course everything's going to be okay. Of course I'm going to get what I need. So therefore, my main concern should be my merits. But he says, but a person who doesn't have bitahon in Hashem, what does he do? He's always having anxiety. What's going to be tomorrow? I don't know. The market can fluctuate. I better, you know, stack up on this. We never know what could be. 
when something bad happens, he loses something, he gets all sad, and he gets, he gets worried, and he says, why this happened to me? He blames himself. He, he doesn't know what, what to understand, explain why things happen. He thinks it's his fault. He doesn't think about Allah Maba, he only thinks about Allah Mazay, and then he gets a rude awakening when he realizes that Akadosh Baruch Hu wanted him to focus on Allah Maba. And therefore, a person has to make sure that he should go and worry about these things. A person should admonish him. You should find a rabbi, a guide who gives you musar and wakes you up and tells you, What about your Abba? Why are you busy? Your Olam Abba is temporary. Olam Abba is forever. Imagine a guy has a 70, uh, uh, what's it called, a, a 75 by 100. He makes half of his house just the entrance, just the, the just the driveway, just just the garage. Where, where, where are you going to live? So a person to make sure to dedicate time to this and to think and make provisions, prepare for Olam Abba, 